Hi, my name is Neil Cresswell. I'm with the Kickstarter Watches and Horology Microbrands group on Facebook. And I also run the Microbrand store, which is a store specializing in microbrand watches, which you probably can guess from seeing the watch in front of you. So as a result of my involvement in um, both the store and the group, I often get a chance to review uh, watches when they're prototypes before they come out into production or before they hit pre-orders. So I was really excited to have the opportunity to review this watch here, which is the um, Jubileon uh, Super Ellipse Chrono, uh, which uh, is a watch coming out from Singapore, will be available on pre-order in about a month from now, it should be around about mid-March 2019. Uh, and it may be on Kickstarter. There's not a guarantee about Kickstarter for this watch. Uh, the way it's gonna work is uh, if they get enough pre-orders, um, before Kickstarter, then it won't be on Kickstarter. If uh, they still have a goal to make, it will be on Kickstarter. I think if there's 50% remaining, you'll see it on Kickstarter. But if they sell the majority of the watches on pre-order, then it might not be. And that's actually not too abnormal. Um, some people have the mistaken impression that Kickstarter is your first opportunity to get a watch. You're certainly um, kind of making a donation to uh, produce a watch that doesn't exist. Uh, in a way, you're basically getting uh, the watch as a gift, a reward. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you're necessarily the first because a brand will often have a pre-order running before Kickstarter, which may have better pricing. And in this case, uh, that is the case. So um, I'll get into the pricing and other details. I just want to um, perhaps cover what I, why I like this watch first. But maybe before I even do that, I should give you a quick disclosure. Um, yes, obviously I run a, run a store, but I'm not selling this in the store. I have no interest uh, in promoting this beyond uh, wanting to do an interesting watch review. I'm not uh, getting to keep the watch after the review. I've not been compensated in any way. And the guy behind the brand, Jubilon, is actually a really interesting guy. His name's Alvin. He does a ton of watch reviews for people. So it's kind of like um, he's on the receiving end of my review now. But he does some awesome reviews. And as a result, I think he's come up with some interesting designs because he's had a close look at a, quite a number of microbrands. And he's also based in Singapore, which to me is the watch capital of microbrands. There's just like more microbrands coming out of Singapore than I've seen anywhere else. So let's get stuck in, uh, see why I like this watch. We'll, we'll test a few features of it. I've not even tested Sapphire Glass yet, which is one of the features. But we'll go through, test it out, um, give you the price, uh, tell you why I like it, uh, and give you the options as well. Uh, we could start with um, what it actually is underneath the hood. It's uh, an ETA Valjo 7750. Um, and that basically, it's a mechanical chronograph movement, Swiss movement. Uh, I'm doing this from memory here. Typically, um, I make a mistake, but on the whole, I'm usually right. Uh, this should, uh, if I remember right, came, came out in about came out in about 1974. But at any rate, it's a uh, high beat, 28,800 uh, um, beats per hour. You know, four hertz. Um, so it's a high beat movement. So it's got a very smooth smooth sweep, and it's got a nice 48 hour power reserve. Typically, these uh, watches will, uh, not these watches, the watches with this movement, um, they're a little bit more expensive on places like Kickstarter. I typically see them $800 plus, uh, 860 uh, For example, I think there's one coming out from a very famous micro brand that's famous for its uh, 7750 watches shortly. Uh, maybe that will even be competing with this one. It should be out about the same time. But at any rate, um, so that's the kind of price point you're going to get for a movement like this, mechanical movement, nice 48-hour power reserve. And it's probably the preferred uh, movement for a micro brand that's going to go Swiss. Um, the other choice would be a Solita, I think, which is basically a kind of a clone of this uh ETA value 7750. So I'm just going to pull out the prices here and I'm going to read from the sheet so make sure I don't make a mistake on that. So first of all the pre-order price on this is $750. So remember I'm saying on Kickstarter um, I typically expect to see a price over 800, 800, 860, that kind of price range. Don't usually see it being a successful campaign over 900 but certainly over 800 there are a ton of successful campaigns. So 750 that's going to be your best price point. I'll put up a link to uh, Jubileon's site. I know they've got a, a Shopify store, so I'll put a link up to that too. Uh, if they don't have a site, I'll um, you can look in the comments here uh, or subtitles to 
uh, get the appropriate link but that will be the best price and that will be keep an eye out for it you know around about mid march or so if you want to come onto the kickstarter watches group we'll probably post about it once it's launched so uh somebody will do a review there or people will comment on it so that's a good way of uh kind of getting uh, a handle on what's going on if it's not on kickstarter and then uh, after about a month or so i think they'll, they'll consider looking at kickstarter in mid-april so it's going to run for a month on pre-orders and actually the quantities are not going to be very high for each color that you have they're going to only make 50 of them so there'll be a serial number on the back um then if you can see that in this light it's a little bit reflective so i've got a limited edition zero zero of 50 because this is actually a prototype um but the actual serial number will be on the back so you'll have a number out of 50 for this blue there's a white and there's also a gray and then the other combinations you've got case color is kind of um i think it's either a yellow gold or a rose gold let me just check that uh, because i've only got this one here it's a vintage rose gold or you've got this lovely gum metal color and i'm really pleased i got this one to review it's kind of hit or miss they send them off to photography they send each one out to a different reviewer a friend of mine mike's reviewing another one of these um and I actually, I like this a lot more than I thought I would. So I wasn't sure I agreed to review it um, because I know Alvin and he does some great reviews. And, you know, tip for tat, I wanted to definitely uh, help him out too because he's helped a lot of micro brands by giving them uh, some honest, candid reviews and feedback. And I actually, um, I'm liking this to the point where I don't know if it's got to go for another review after mine, but if it doesn't, I'm supposed to be returning it. I'm actually probably going to ask him if I can make an offer to purchase this. So um, that's how much I'm liking this. I love Sunburst Blues, but it's a very deep, dark blue. Um, and it's a chronograph. It's obviously the most desirable chronograph for a micro brand in terms of the movement there. Uh, but it's got some other features I really like. The gunmetal color is just simply awesome. It goes so well with this denim strap. And you actually have a choice of two denim strap colors. Um, and basically... I just think it goes so well with the blue. It's the perfect match. It's kind of a, you've got the, a little bit of the gray picked up on the case. You've got the blue from the dial. And you can see it's got two crowns. Um, so it's actually got um, four, well, it's got two pushers and two crowns. So the crown on the left is actually two. It's a, they're both screen crowns, 100 meters water resistance, which is also nice in a chrono. You don't normally get that. But you'd unscrew this and you could turn the inner dial, the um, chapter ring that's in white, to change to a different time zone so you could kind of use it as a poor man's gmt it doesn't have a fourth uh, 24 hour hand but it certainly does work as a, a gmt function which is nice and it's also unusual in a chrono i mean how many of us are going to time our uh, how fast our vehicles are going and that kind of a thing i think chronos are often worn and not used as chronos and this kind of gives it a little bit more functionality um so i, I certainly like that feature with it and then, uh, of course, you've got a stop-start pusher um, and a reset pusher. Um, and you've got the normal crown here for adjusting the uh, date and time. Uh, I see it's close to midnight here. I'm doing a rather late review. So it's, let me just adjust the uh, <coughs> hands here a little bit and try and get it past midnight so you can see more what it would look like. Um, just man I'll manually wind that forward. There we go. Um, what it, there it is, flipped over to the 25th here. So I'll just push this out the way here for now. So um, I won't screw this in because I'm going to play with this in a second. So basically it's uh, got a nice feature that it has a day of the week as well as a, a day of the month. And you've got the subdial for the normal time seconds on the left. Um, it hacks, it hand winds. And then you also have the two chronometer dials. So if I start the timer on this... It's a very nice, clean click. You can tell when it's pushed. Um, and then basically it would stop and start. So I've just pushed that in the whole way. Um, and you can see the smooth second hand sweep on this. So it's nice. I find it's very uh, firm pressed, but that's kind of a feature of the 7750, but it, but it works really well. Um, it's you're not making any mistake when you're stopping or starting this. Um, so keep that in mind. And this being a screw down crown, this is not going to jog like a bezel. Though having said that, it can be a little finicky to adjust. So if I take this out for now, let, this pops out on a spring as well. Actually, no spring. Um, but just once it's unscrewed, it starts moving. You can just turn that very quickly to whatever position you want. 
so you can have a different time zone, which can be useful. There are a few issues being a prototype, which we're already aware of. You can see that if I line up the 12 here, uh, the numbers after the one don't line up on the outer uh, bezel, the chapter ring. And that's that's a known issue. It's a prototype that will be fixed in production. And in fact, when I tried to line up other numbers like the three and the nine, um, and try and get those aligned, then other things don't quite line up as well. But it's not too bad. You know where the numbers are, work with the indices. Um, it's still a 12 hour, not a 24 hour. So screw that back in so I don't jog it. Um, so basically, I don't think that's an issue and that's going to get fixed. Uh, so it's certainly worth mentioning. Um, and then let's talk about how this movement behaves. In terms of what I like and don't like about the watch, I'm always very candid. Um, I really love the front. It actually looks so good on a wrist, uh, 42 millimeters. So let's just get my watch off here. Uh, I've got a seven and a half inch wrist and, um, this is basically, um, 42 millimeter diameter, excluding the crowns. So it fits really nicely as you can see. And, uh, the lug to lug, I think is 51 millimeters. So it's going to be a typical size for 42. Uh, it's certainly got a nice cushion case to it, but just I just love all the different angles on this. You've still got the curves, so it's not harsh. Uh, and you've got some curves here, and you've got these screws as well. Um, but but even in here, you've got a, like an inset. You can probably see that as well. Uh, so they've definitely made a, it's a very slight bezel. I love the patina effect on it. So it's actually just looks a bit different. I think this will go great with a pair of jeans, a smart casual but it's got this really deep sunburst. So I've completely fallen for it, to be honest. I really love the watch. I love the color of the strap, but let's start getting into some of the things I don't like too, because there, there's certainly no such thing as a perfect watch. And uh, every watch, even uh, the most expensive of them have has an issue or something that could be a little bit better perhaps. So I have no showstoppers on this. Um, just to tell you up front, I really like the watch. I am going to try and make an offer, see if I can purchase it. Um, so absolutely no uh, showstoppers, but these this is kind of nitpicky. I'm just trying to share this from a review perspective. So the first thing I noticed, you know, the, as I mentioned, uh, 7750s can be a little firm press uh, to operate, not a big deal. Um, but with the crown as well, um, it's got a pretty strong spring. So you've got these crown guards, uh, which kind of are a little bit nice because they protect the pushes to some extent. But I found uh, when you have a watch that hasn't been wound very much, not a problem. You wind it, push it in and turn it. Uh, but when you have a pretty tight watch, it is tighter to wind because it is a mechanical chronograph than a three-hander. Um, it's a very firm spring. So when I'm pushing this in, it's really hard to get that first half turn done because you've got these um, crown guards in the way. So um, I don't. maybe this is me being finicky. But I have sometimes had a bit of difficulty because you have got to put a firm pressure on to get that started. Is it screwing down or not? And you can see it's not screwing down. I actually got to try this a few times by pressing in quite firmly. And then once it start, once it's got the grip, it will go in. Uh, once it started the first half turn, I think that's in now. Yeah, so I had to try three or four times. That could be me. I'm very fat fingered. Um, seven and a half inch wrists. I'm, by fat fingered, I mean I'm very clumsy. I don't know anybody that's clumsy than me. So um, I would, you know, take that with some pinch of salt. But nevertheless, I did feel um, you're probably not going to adjust the time too often. You know, once every uh, it's it's fairly an, fairly accurate watch. So you're probably not going to adjust it more than maybe once a week or something like that. And then. Um, it is an automatic, so it does self-wind as well. You can see there's a rotor on the back. Um, and it's got a 48-hour power reserve as opposed to a 38, which you would see in a, a three-hander. So it's actually not that big a deal, not a showstopper for me. But nevertheless, I, I didn't enjoy that. It's a little bit of a battle to get that screwed in because you've got to apply pressure and you've got to turn it enough to catch. And you've got these two crown guards that kind of stop you from doing that because you can't even get a proper half turn in. Once you've started, you don't have to put the pressure on and press at the same time. You can just keep turning uh, once it's actually caught. So minor niggle, not really a big deal. Um, the next minor niggle I have, and I'm sure they're going to address this because I've already brought this up with uh, Alvin and, and told him about this. And I think somebody else brought this up too. This strap is um, 
I imagine is going to be the stock strap that they're going to come with. So I put this in the innermost hole there. No more holes beyond this innermost hole. And let's just put this through the keepers so you can see. It's already kind of very, very loose on my wrist. Now, I have a exactly seven and a half inch wrist, which is dead center for a an average uh, Western man size. And uh, basically, um, I'm very comfortable. I would wear 46, uh, 47 millimeter watches, no problem. I don't like wearing under 42, though I, I can wear maybe down to 38. So I'm, you know, I'm your average guy, wrist size, spot on, right in the middle, 19 centimeters, seven and a half inches. Yet I'm using the innermost strap and it's still loose. I can get a complete finger back here. So I actually like to wear my straps loose most of the time, though not always, not if I'm maybe exercising or something. Um, but, um, you know, for daily wear, this is OK. But as this strap wears in, it's it's a new strap and it, and it picks up on the curve a little bit more. Maybe it might stretch a little. I can see this getting too loose where it might slip down to underneath my wrist. I don't particularly like that. So this strap is either slightly too long uh, for some people or um, most likely they've got the holes in the wrong place. Um, they should have perhaps an extra couple of holes in here for people with uh, cater for people with six and a half inch wrists or bigger. Uh, that would be my recommendation for a 42 millimeter watch. And that's something they'll have plenty of time to address before they actually do do the production. These are all going to be on pre-orders in a month or two. So if they do do a Kickstarter, that's going to run probably for 30 days. So it's going to take us pre-orders uh, mid-April, mid, sorry, mid, uh, mid-March to mid-April. Kickstarter, if that happens, mid-April to mid-May. So you're going to get a pre-order placed in in May, so they've got plenty of time to arrange uh, to get um, you know the strap issue fixed. So again, this is nitpicky. You can take it off, put another strap on standard 22 millimeter straps, not a big deal. Um, but it's something that I like to point out everything I can about a watch. Uh, a couple of other things to point out about the strap, which are not in its favor. Uh, the first one is these uh, keepers are very, very thin. And I've had kind of down in denim star straps before and find that they shred very easily. So I would have liked to seen thicker keepers. I mean, also one tends to go over the other. It's um, it's super thin. It, it's certainly functional, uh, but I'm wondering about uh, longevity of this, to be honest. When they get very loose like this, just to start with, it's, it falls down. Um, they tend to get looser over time a little bit. Um, and um, I hate to have a loose keeper running around where it's only working with one keeper as well. So I'm not so happy about the keepers. Again, not a showstopper. That might be something that can be addressed. Or maybe it's a non-issue and the, this works out well. Um, some other differences we're going to see with uh, the strap. Um, on the back right now, it says genuine leather. Um, I do believe these are calf skin straps. It's also got jubilee on, on there. It's a little bit faint for both. They're going to remove the genuine leather stamp. But they've not made it clear, even though it's a handmade strap, which is nice, that uh, they're upgrading the leather to either top grain or full grain, which are better quality leather than genuine. Genuine is actually the lowest grade of uh, real leather. Um, but this is a very well made strap. I found it extremely comfortable, very supple. See, it bends very nicely and it hasn't cracked on the underside. So it's certainly a comfortable strap. There's, I'm not saying that the quality is bad. It's just the lowest grade of leather. And it's not clear by taking off genuine leather if they're actually meaning that they're going to be doing a higher grade of leather. But, you know, if uh, that's the case, I'll mention that in the comments. So you are getting one denim strap with your watch. Three color dials. One is a white dial. Uh, one is this blue dial. Nice sunburst. And the third one's a gray. Um, you're also going to, uh, if you're buying on the pre-order, and that's prior to the Kickstarter, you also get a leather strap which they've sent me an example of here. Uh, perhaps this one isn't the best color choice for this watch, but you get an idea. And uh, again, this is uh, very interesting because um, this is, I believe, also calfskin. Um, but this doesn't give me the impression of this one in particular being calfskin. It, it, it might be, uh, but it, it feels a little plasticky to me and it's super supple. I mean, it's more than I would expect with calfskin. Um, but um, definitely, if you want a nice, flexible, comfortable strap, this is probably a good one. It says genuine leather again. Um, 
so I don't really know if this is actually leather the way that this is ridged it could be um, it's giving me the impression it's um, possibly a PU leather but this could be very unfair it might be the real deal and just very very soft but the way that it's grained is just feeling a little bit different to uh, leather um, shall we say so um, obviously it's a nice strap I think this ridging is going to look good and I know that um, probably Mike's going to be wearing it on this strap so I'm not really digging a hole with a strap um, I'm just pointing out everything I can about it and there will be other differences with production as well um, one of the differences you're going to get is a much more deeper signing on the bezel sorry on the uh, on the buckle uh, you probably can't even make this out right now, but it actually does have a Jubileon logo on there. So that's one difference. They just basically, uh, it's a lovely antique pattern, but it's too uh, shallow, so you can't really pick up that it's there unless you look really carefully. So that's one thing they're going to fix, which is nice. Uh, they also mentioned about having SG on the crowns. Um, you've got a Jubileon on the crown here and a Jubileon sign on the crown here so if they're going to change to sg that is a nice um shout out to singapore it's nice to have brands that are kind of pri proud of uh, uh their roots um so i kind of like that and another difference is going to be a larger exhibition case back which is nice um nothing wrong with this one it's not the most uh decorated movement in here but uh, one thing i did notice you couldn't read the uh, wording on the rotor because it's kind of the bottom third is cut off because the case back wasn't big enough. So they've got issues with the prototype. They learn from it. It's like a first version and they improve them in a second version. So these kind of issues that we're seeing, it's all normal part of the course. And I'm glad that they called those out and they're going to fix them. The watch itself is a super, uh, how should I put it? I wouldn't say super heavy. You're going to get the wrong impression. Um, it's a really, it's got a little heft weight to it, and I really like that. It feels really well built. Um, I, you know, sometimes I get some pretty light watches and I wonder what's going on inside. Uh, this one obviously has a lot of mechanical features in it, um, so it, I expect a little bit more on my, on my watch. But the case is very solid. Um, I can tell it's a pretty thick case just by holding it and the weight. So you you have a really well-built watch here, which is a, a really good feature, uh, something I would want in a watch, uh, with a gorgeous um, age patina effect that I'm absolutely fallen for. I think I've covered pretty much everything I would like to go over. Maybe the, we'll cover the loom last. Let's just uh, set up for a couple of tests here. I like to... Um, do a sapphire test I've not done that and we'll actually do our own measurements I'm left-handed so I'm going to try and do this right-handed and who knows I might screw up um, right that's an interesting question it's 15 millimeters now it's an automatic uh, it's, it should be 15 I'm just moving my hand around a bit if you can see that um, here we go 15.3 I have here yeah so 50, oh, 50 millimeters under 16 is really good because it's uh first of all it's an automatic so it's got a rotor secondly you've got this particular case design and uh I didn't get into all the features of why I love the dial but it's not just oh we've got three sub dials I don't know if you can see really if I bring this up closer uh, it's a lovely sunburst effect but on the sub dials they're actually uh, there's actually a slight slope on uh, on the outer markers so it actually slopes down so it's actually a layered dial uh, with uh, some gorgeous sub dials on it um, so you have all that as a combination and uh, exhibition case back with sapphire glass that's a bit thicker sapphire glass on the front uh, it should be sapphire on the front and back so you have that all together I would have expected 16 millimeters so 15 is pretty decent um, and I'm told it's 42 millimeters lug to lug. I mean, not to lug to lug, uh, side to side, but that's without the crowns, which is really hard to get in there because this whole side's completely taken up with crowns. Um, they did give me a with crown measurement, uh, which I can go read, but I might as well just measure that. And I'm seeing 49 millimeters, which I think that was the number I measured. So it sounds like a lot. Oh my goodness, it's 49 millimeter watch. But what, what you really have to worry about is not that, but the lug to lug, which is 51 millimeters. And what you'd expect for 42 will be up to 52 millimeter. Um, oh, I'm getting 49. Hang on. 
let's see, there we go. 50 point something. So, yeah, so when they're saying 51, I guess it's just over 50. They're just being a little bit generous there. So the dimensions are actually pretty decent. So let's let's go take the, uh, do the sapphire glass test. The way this works is if this lights up, uh, you know, one to four bars typically, it's sapphire glass. If it doesn't light up, it's not sapphire glass. It's simple enough. And we have sapphire glass, no surprises there. Um, one day I'll catch somebody out, I'm sure. And on the back, uh, we have sapphire glass as well. So that's a really nice touch. You don't normally get sapphire glass on the case back, so they didn't cut any corners there. Uh, also, which surprised me uh, for the back, not so much for the front, it does have an anti-reflective coating, which actually should actually add to the blue color here. It's probably a blue color anti-reflective. Trying to see if I can pick that up with a light. Uh, but they have an anti-reflective on the back as well. Not the most exciting case back in terms of looking at the movement inside. Um, not too much to see here, but it's very cleanly executed with strong brushing, vertical brushing on it. Um, so it's actually a decent looking case back. Um, I would have probably not bothered with an exhibition case back, but people want to see they've got a nice mechanical movement. So some people will go for that. Um, I really love the front and that's what it's all about though. So absolutely love this watch. Um, let's see if I give you the retail pricing. Uh, so I mentioned pricing already. So uh, before Kickstarter pricing, 750. That's probably about $100 cheaper than you'd typically get on Kickstarter. And then on if it does go on Kickstarter, let's see, they're going to start from $799, so 800 So that's about right. It'll go upwards from there. So early bird gets the worm. Shipping's $30 worldwide. Um, and we're talking US dollars here, not Singaporean dollars for the record. And let's see, there's probably going to be, um, depending on how well the Kickstarter does, I've got some information here. I'm not sure if I should be sharing it about some potential stretch goals. So it's nice that they're planning on all, for all of this. And the retail is exactly where I'd expect this to be. This is a uh, just under $2,000 retail, uh, $1,199 US dollars. So um, obviously the right price is going to, or the best price is going to be uh, pre-orders prior to any possible Kickstarter. But if you miss the pre-order pricing, you've got Kickstarter as well. I'm pretty sure seeing as this is in Singapore, it's also going to be carried in a few watch stores as well. Um, so you'll have an opportunity to get it there at retail or get it direct from the brand. But keep in mind, there's only 50 of each color. So if one of these colors is popular. I'm really, I'm, I'm so happy that I actually got this one because there's other combination of not just colors, but you can also get a dial here that has, has got a very intriguing uh, disc instead of a a second hand needle. It's a rotating disc, uh, and that's actually an, a cool looking feature. But I'm actually liking the sunburst blue effect on the four dial. So. I think I would rather personally pick the needle, but if you want something that's a little different in your collection, that's a nice touch. Um, there is actually an opportunity to get a version of this now from Watcha, W-A-T-C-H-A, uh, which is basically uh, another Facebook group. And they have a version with a rotating W here instead of the seconds. So I actually liked the seconds. It's kind of useful for me to do some uh, simple timing without the chronograph uh, or just, you know, obviously it, it really makes no difference. You can probably get the approximate time from the position of the W. So uh, that works equally well. But my, my taste here is to see the needle with the full sunburst. So this is an awesome watch. I'm just so happy about it. Um, I think I've covered all the features. It's BGW9 Loom, which is a Swiss Superluminova. Uh, it's actually also the same loom that Seiko use under a different brand name. Uh, the, not so many people are into that, but it's basically um, the most popular loom. It's um, one of the uh, longest lasting looms you can get. And BGW9, if I remember right, is blue. So let me uh, get some of the lights here and we'll do a loom test and then uh, we're done. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. So I will be right back. I'm just going to hit some of our lights. And for the loom test, I'm going to be uh, using uh, a UV light, which is cheating. I have worn this for a few days, 
and uh, let's get the UV light on here just so you can see where the loom is going to be going once I turn the light off. Um, so I have worn this watch for a few days and it's basically um, picked up really nicely. It was very cloudy winter weather under my sleeve most of the time, probably peeked out a few times. I was walking around hiking for about an hour, came back in and it was nicely lit up. So it's certainly uh, well loomed on the prototype, which is a good sign. Uh, and you can see it's a very strong loom application on the um, all the hands, the uh, including the dot on the second hand and the other hands too. But I'm actually thinking the subdial is actually pretty nicely loomed as well, which I didn't even expect the subdials to be loomed. So I'm really impressed with how this is looking. So let me get the light and we can see. There we go. So I'll just bring this a bit closer. So obviously not a realistic situation with... Um, uh, you know, UV light, but it just helps you show how well it's loomed. You can get the idea. Let's start the chronograph running here and you can see that second hand going around. Um, and you see the second hand on the left for the uh, sub dial for the time. And now you see the chronographs, uh, second hand moving around. So it's nicely loomed. Um, it's a nice color. It goes really well with the rest of the watch. I think that's everything from the review. But if you have any questions, do let me know and I'll be more than happy to address them. Thanks a lot. Take care.